Well, hello everyone. Well, it's Tuesday night. So, we're here again. Oh, let's see. Grandma Rose, brown coat, 180 degrees from average. Glad to see you. Sheriff Jackson, Duncan 1900. Wow, nice, nice little group here. And Brad, BC, glad to see you here. Goodness sakes. Well, we got uh, got a few people in here. Finite World, thank you for uh, for jumping in here and, and bringing your toolbox along. I see you got your wrench out. So, anybody do anything interesting this week? Hope this works. Our homestead. Hello. Autumn McDonald. So well it's it's been a week. It's been a week so far. We had uh, had a heck of a storm come through here just a little bit ago. Didn't know if we were gonna have power or not. But uh, we are here. And uh, BC, I saw your videos. You're moving to Texas. Um, obviously, you're gonna you're gonna do a lot of videos about that. But yeah, that's uh, exciting times. I take it that uh, you're downsizing a little bit. That's just just what I kind of gather. That a uh, little bit, maybe less property to take care of and. Easier to maintain, easier to get around. That's my guess. So, I'm excited for you. Glad, uh, glad to see that. Uh, Texas is just 50 miles from me now. Okay, so where you live now, you're only 50 miles from Texas, so you only like moved an hour away or something. Michael Gross in Oregon. Pleased to see you. Glad that you uh, you made the program here this evening. Grandma Rose. So Grandma Rose has a comment for you. Uh, use some of your tips on varying your editing angle in the video I put up this morning. I have not seen that, but um, I will make it a, I'm making a note to go look. Be sure to be sure to check that out. Right, angle of view. I understand what you mean. Like maybe holding the camera lower, or uh, maybe more of a, a high in the air or off to the side. Just a different viewpoint. Something that, <coughs> excuse me, perhaps one is not uh, not used to seeing, which always makes them a little bit interesting. Mm, good coffee. If anybody knows who says that all the time, you can, uh, you can just jump in there. You know, they pick up their uh, their coffee mug, and it, it's usually a little bit bigger mug with the wide bottom, and takes a nice drink and goes. Bottom has a comment. Good comment. Good coffee. Attempted to use the basic version of Filmora. BC Trucks is J. Null. You got it, BC. Yep, J. Null's the one that uh, does it. He gets the prize for the night. He gets to listen to you for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Otto McDonald. I attempted to use the basic version of Filmora, but got completely confused and wound up not editing the footage and splicing the beginning and end on and uploading it. Well, in some cases, that's all you need to do. Um, but maybe we can alleviate some of that confusion for you here this evening. Yeah, holy crap. That's, 
that's good coffee. So, yeah, Autumn says, I hear you hiding, Cher. <laughs> so, well, let me get some advertisements out of the way first. And she's just shaking her head. But last week, Sherry uploaded a video that, uh, well, actually, I guess I probably uploaded it, but she made the video that um, we're doing a very tiny part to try to help out a fellow YouTuber um, individual that has some breathing issues, may or may not pop in here tonight, but that's June Gall. She, uh, she has COPD. Did you know it all stemmed from her, ceramics? Her work yes, in the ceramics yes. Shop. Yeah, she, uh, which is, I thought was strange because your mom and your parents owned one. Yeah, she, uh, she developed this breathing problem due to a craft slash hobby that she participated in, and that was working with ceramics. And for those of you that, that are not familiar with ceramics, it's, uh, it's a clay based product and very, very fine dust. And if you, dust is not, not good for an individual, you know, for, for most individuals, they can, they can handle it. Okay. But in some cases it really uh, attacks and it did in her case. And she is going to have to get, um, replacement I'm both. Yeah. 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 yeah, like replacement lungs or something like that. So, we are, uh, if you can look up the URL on that thing. It's right there in the description. Oh, it's in the description, okay. For, the, for, for our video? Yes. Yeah, if, if you, if you scroll down in the description, you'll, you'll see a link to this video. I can go ahead of my stupid But what, what we're going to do here is... We have some tote bags that we have purchased to uh, to market. That uh, and, and as you know, it, with t-shirts or tote bags or anything like that, you don't make a lot. You, you don't make big money. It just doesn't happen. But we are selling these tote bags that has Smudge's picture on it. Two family homestead. We're selling them for twenty dollars delivered to your house in the United States. I'm gonna say continental United States. I don't know about Alaska or Hawaii. We haven't, I just don't know. But out of that $20, $5 of that is gonna go directly to June Gall. If we make $4, well, we just donated an extra dollar. If we make $6 on it, well, then we're $1 ahead. But for the most part, it's a, it's a break even thing for us. And, and Andy's Backyard and Shop also has. Yes, Andy's Backyard and Shop has also, the, yeah. also created a video where he's mm -hmm. selling some of his plaques. Same, same sort of deal. And that money is all going to go to, uh, to June. And we'll be giving that to her in her PayPal, PayPal account because there's no fees taken out of it. It's just um, one of our ways to try to help. And if you folks would like to help, either by purchasing one of those, send us an email, or through Andy, or just maybe make a donation to June, send us an email. We will get you her uh, her PayPal thing if you just wanted to like donate 10 bucks to her or something like that. I mean, if you turn the tables, I'm sure you would appreciate it. That's why that's how we look at it. So, that's advertisement number one. Advertisement number two. Cherry again made a video last week that due to us taking the grandkids camping and running out of time on Friday, we didn't get it uploaded. Thought we'd have uh, decent internet at the campground. Uh, that didn't happen. So... I didn't get it uploaded to YouTube until it was actually Monday morning, about 2.30 in the morning. 
by the time it was all said and done, by the time we got back, got things ironed out, got the kids back to their parents, and and brought stuff in out of the camper. But she has a video out there where you can win a cookbook from Layman's. It's their Diamond Jubilee cookbook. Uh, it's no big deal to, to to win this. You simply have to watch the video. You have to leave a comment in, in the comment sections that uh, I, I would like this or I want this or give me that cookbook or something. And uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, we'll do a, uh, a short live stream. And we will do a, uh, we will get the winner at that time. I'll use a uh, random comment picker. And we will uh, go through that video and grab a random comment online so everybody can see it. And that'll be the uh, September's winner of the Diamond Jubilee cookbook from Layman's Hardware. And if you're not familiar with Layman's, there's a there's a link down in our description someplace down there that you can click on that will take you to Layman's. And if you are have any off-grid aspirations, if you want some neat homesteading things, you want some um, it's just a fantastic store. If you've never had the opportunity to browse through uh, the layman's website, by all means, go do her. Allie Oakley at J.D. Allison. Good evening. <coughs> so, okay. Advertisement number two is done. I have one more. And that is... For those of you that have any prepper aspirations or maybe some camping or maybe some have some stuff on hand in the house where uh, you don't use a lot or you I don't know the best way to say it but but that's thrive life thrive life is freeze-dried food and it's good food we've had uh, we've had the opportunity to sample some other brands and I don't think they hold a candle yeah <laughs> sheriff's making faces over here yeah but Thrive Life is very very good um, there's also a link in the description where you can go go shop and if you'd like there's also business opportunities available for those of you that would be so inclined that you'd say man this is really good stuff I'd like to get in on this but uh, if you just want to pick up some a couple packages of freeze dried, like I'm going to say onions or stuff like this that maybe doesn't keep a long time, you know, you dice up onions and stuff, you can't, you got to use them all up or they, they'll just go to waste. Well, this is all freeze dried. So you can just open up this container and take a teaspoon or so out whatever whatever your tastes dictate and throw it in the mix of what you're cooking and it's just like fresh good stuff so by all means go check that out okay what else that's it alright thank you all for coming no I'm kidding Next week we will be, uh, we'll do the show here again on Tuesday night, and then Wednesday morning we'll be hitting the road because we are going to be heading to uh, to Virginia. Now, Carrie, you got 25 pounds of onions to do something with, and you can keep them for a long time in their full form. But if you want to, you want to dice one up. How long is, and you, you don't use it all. How long is it that going to last you? Oh, I used onion and can them. French onion soup and can them. Yeah, French onion soup, can them. 180 degrees from average. We're going to see them again. Oh. This is, a, this is whole, remember, he said he was going. Yeah. Is yep. his whole family going? Yeah, is your whole family going? Um, 
ending. It's about time. Oh, we've been plugging you so hard, Andy, on uh, on the signs you're doing here for, for June. So thank you for, for jumping in here. Well, not this time, unfortunately. So I don't know. You just married just, like just his son and him again. That works. All right. Not in Texas. Not here. I need to get a dehydrator started. Yeah, the the difference between Thrive Life and de dehydrator, the freeze dried is a little different process than dehydrating. Dehydrating just kind of sucks the moisture out. Whereas the freeze drying not only sucks the moisture out, but freezes it. But it doesn't remain in the frozen state. It's it's a very, very unique process. The machines that can do that type of thing are very expensive. Um, a small one for in the home, I think probably starts right in the neighborhood at $3,000 and goes up. So... They're very expensive. It's a lot cheaper just to buy a little bit of product every now and then from uh, from Thrive Life. Sits on the shelf and is good for 25 to 35 years depending on the product. Good stuff. So, on with tonight's show. I put in the uh, title, How to Cut Your your Large Video Files Down to Size, Your Raw Files. So, let me... Uh, bring the other screen over here online and we will get Filmora fired up here Now, the, I guess the strange thing about this particular part of Filmora is you can't get to it once you're fully into the program. You get to it from this display right here, where you select what mode you want to get into. They have the full feature mode, that's the one you're going to get into probably 98% of the time, maybe more. They have an easy mode. I don't really recommend that unless you want to make some sort of a slideshow with uh, still pictures or something like that. Um, you don't have quite as much control with the easy mode. Right underneath that is what's called instant cutter. That's the piece of this we're going to use here tonight and show you how that works. Then below that is an action cam tool, which is, it gives you some enhancements if you're using things like GoPros or other small action cams where typically the image is distorted, has kind of a fisheye type effect because of, just because of the way that they, uh, they set those tools up. But let me first go find some video files. Okay, nine twenty eight will be a good one. So you open up the instant cutter, of course, you, you're at this point, you just open that up. And it will ask you to open up a file. <coughs> okay, and I'm gonna grab this one right here.
And this is, uh, this is one angle of Sherry's uh, recipe, I think, that she used for the, uh, for the cookbook. Or no, it's this, this one, this was the one for the, uh, for June. So this one's not as long, but same principle applies. Yeah, this entire file is only four and a half minutes long, five minutes, four minutes, 55 seconds. <coughs> but the way this program works is you contain an area of the video that you want and just export it. It exports it out as a file, it gives it the uh, start and finish from those points and creates another file that you can use. So just for example, I want to, I don't want this very beginning. So I'm going to move this over to this area right here. And if you notice, right, right here it tells you where you're at in the file it gives you gives you a minute and a second hour minute second and frame and of course where the end of the file is so i want to cut i'm using arbitrary numbers here for no particular reason i'm going to cut about two minutes out of the center of this file so now i'll go to the end and I will bring it over to to thirty four seventeen. I mean, I can make it right to the exact. I'm going to cut exactly one minute out of this file in this area here. I can move the little timeline marker and play it so I can make sure this is the part that I want. Um, let me quickly set up the sound here so you guys can hear as well. something where a hundred dollars isn't going to help. I have come up with an idea, a couple ideas. This one is, we have new tote bags here. Two Family Homestead, Smudge, for those of you that don't know, is our logo. He is a real dog. He is my St. Bernard slash Great Pyrenees. He's three years old now. Okay. So what I've done is I've selected a one minute section out of this clip, and that's just the part that I want. I want to take that and put it into another clip, or this is a part that I feel is important that I want to modify in some other aspect. But I'm just going to export it. So I click export, and it will say save to, and of course you can go pick. So just to make it easier I am going to go save this exactly in the same location that I got the original file from I believe it was in that folder and I'm saying after finish open the output folder so I've directed the file to where I want it to save. You are not doing any editing on the file here. All you're doing is cutting a section of the clip out. That's all you're doing. You still, if you need to change the color, if you need to change the volume, if you need to crop it or expand it or 
do some other fancy things with it, you still need to do that. But what this has given you, when I click OK here, it's done that fast. So to open it up, and I told it to open up the, uh, the location of the file, which is what you see here right now. I took it from this file, which was uh, recorded on Sherry's iPhone. I took the one minute clip out of the second. If you notice that here, it is showing 59 seconds. Well, 59 seconds is close enough to one minute for me. How does Femora come up with the clips? How does it come up with the clips? Well, you, you tell it, Grandma Rose. In other words, the idea behind this is perhaps you have taken, I'm going to say 30 minutes of video. Well, if you throw 30 minutes of video into an editing program, that all of a sudden makes your timeline real long. If you want to cut this down into a five to eight minute video, there's a lot of content there that you don't need or don't want. So what this allows you to do is to very quickly take that original, let's say 30 minute file and cut it into pieces. So you just have small pieces to work with instead of trying to have this great big long clip in memory and trying to work with it that way. So I'll go ahead and play this since it's only a minute. Maybe. Yeah, it's going to open up here. But she needs a lung transplant. That's something where $100 isn't going to help. I have come up with an idea, a couple ideas. This one is, we have two beds here. Two family homestead. Smudge, for those of you that don't know, is our logo. He is a real dog. He is my St. Bernard slash Great Pyrenees. He's three years old now. The youngest of the dogs, but the biggest of the dogs. He's a big baby. So we have these tote bags. They're about 15 and a half by 15 and three quarters, something like that. Cotton. Very nice to take to the store, to the farmer's market, whatever. Overnight bag. Grandkids use them for trick or treat bags this year. Anyway, we are offering these tote bags. Okay, so that's that's the video that it just it just made from the very long one. Now that's one clip. I can go and take another section of this by moving the timeline markers. And I'm looking at your question, how does Fillmore come up with the clips? I mean, where does it make the cuts? Does it figure out where the starts and stops are? No, you'd figure that out. You have the entire video laid out in front of you here. just like what, I'm, what I have here in front of everybody. And I am moving the start line to wherever I choose to move it. I can play the whole video and go, okay, I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to check. That's it. Two minutes, 56 seconds, and 24 frames. And I want just, let me move the little play bar. We're going to go ahead and put that money into her PayPal account. Uh, Super Chat takes a certain amount of money. GoFundMe takes a And I'm going to stop it right there. So this is going to be a very short part of the clip. But again, just to show you how this works, we're going to click Export. So I still have my same original full file here. We have not heard it in any way. And I'm going to cut another piece out of the middle of it. It has remembered the location that I put the last one. It doesn't ask me for a file name because it just increments them. 
I'll say OK. And it's done it that quick. So if you notice, it opened up the location where I told it to save the file. It keeps the same name as the original movie and then it, what do they call it when they add a number on the end? That's not a preface, it's a suffix. Makes it incremental days ago. Same name and then one and same name and then two and three and so here's what it did. It took this one, which is what it did first, and then it has a little two after it. So now if I play this one, head and put that money into her PayPal account. Uh, Super Chat takes a certain amount of money. Okay. Now, obviously, this was not a big video to begin with. But if this would have been a 20-minute recording, I could still cut out whatever pieces of it I would like to cut out. So we'll go back to the program. And at this point, I'm going to say that I'm done. Those are the pieces I want. It says, do you want the... Quit the instant cutter. And I'm going to say yes. It's going to bring me back to the project start screen. So now I'm going to go into full feature mode, which is where you would normally go. And let me just uh, add a new folder. And I'm going to import my files here. OK, this was the original. That's the original five minute movie. If you hold down the control key, you can select more than one. I'm gonna, this is the first selection we took out of it, and this is the second selection we took out of it. I'll bring all three of those in here at the same time. And I know that it could get a little bit confusing right at first, but the original file doesn't have anything after the end of it. It's whatever the camera or whatever device you use to record the video to begin with, whatever name that has on it, there's nothing after it. The first piece that I cut out has a dash one. The second piece I cut out has a dash one and then so parentheses, what, what are the brackets? Bracket two. So this piece is that second one. And put that money into her PayPal account. Uh, Super Chat takes a certain amount of money. Okay. So this is this was the entire video. This entire video is approximately five minutes long so it's it's not a big deal but if this video had been 30 minutes or an hour long that makes it very tough to edit because it takes up so much room and you're cutting so many big pieces out but we could we could edit this just like what we did here and pull those clicks out you remember, I believe it said it was at about 134, roughly. So it should be roughly in this area, give or take less than a second. 
and we made it uh, one minute long. Have we made it? Grammar Rose say, okay, I get you. You don't have to delete everything except the file you want to keep to save the clip as a separate video. Exactly. Exactly. All this does is give you smaller pieces to work with. And then Autumn said, the other thing that I found that weirded me out was that the audio seemed to be different to the audio like lagged. Okay. <clears throat> Editing programs are very computer and memory intensive on whatever device you're using them on. And rule of thumb is the more advanced an editing program is, the harder it is on the piece of hardware you're using it on. So they have what they call here a pre-render, where you render the timeline. And that is where I have the circle flashing. Let me, uh, no. My computer is somewhere behind. Okay. How can you tell me? Because mine is lagging very badly what? with these programs open. Tell you what. Are you seeing where the mouse is with the big circles? Okay. All right. So, if you pre-render your clip here, you should find that the playback is pretty good. It will not affect the finished product, but it's it's painful sometimes that the, the bigger the the bigger the clips, the more complex you make it by adding transitions, filters, uh, speeding up clips, slowing down clips, changing the sound. The more items you do to that, the harder it is on the computer. And very few of us have real big beefy computers very few of us have that it's to get a uh, a top of the line editing computer you're not going to pick it up at Walmart or even Sam's Club you're going to have to go to Dell or you're going to have to uh, go to a, uh, a custom manufacturer a micro center or somebody along that line and uh, and get into one of their top of the line PCs, but that just that just raised the uh, price of admission as as far as what we want to have fun with here. So what they've done is they've created a pre-render video area here. So when you click this, it's creating a preview version. just to view the video. It's creating a temporary file for it to read. Now, I really haven't done anything here. I'm gonna cancel. It may take it a couple minutes to do that. On my computer, between running OBS, running the editing program, 
running one, two, three, four, four cams, a sound system, external mic, um, Skype's running in the background, the uh, YouTube is running on three different pages, running three monitors. My computer's pretty heavily taxed at the moment. <laughs> Must not be taxed too much if you can see that right away. <laughs> Red Duchess Farm, hello. <laughs> Sherry's being mean to me. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to take this back out. The whole point is, these smaller pieces <coughs> give you a whole lot less real estate to work with. So if you're using the quick cutter, I would cut it off so you have a little bit to edit out, so you can perfect it the best you can. So you make it a little bit long and you start it just a little bit early. But instead of having five minutes of video, okay, now I've got one minute. This is the important minute that I want out of that video. I can put it in here and I can edit it this way. I can add filters to it Autumn's asking when making a video for YouTube do you think it's better to have short videos that can be spliced together than having a long piece to edit making a video for YouTube do you think it's better to have short videos I'm going to answer that in this fashion. If you are if you are making a video, the last thing, in my opinion, you want to you want to do is go to the camera, turn it on, yeah. do something, turn the camera back off, then maybe make a couple changes. Then you go back and turn the camera back on, yeah, and come back over and do something, and then turn the camera back off. That would be more of a pain in the tush. That, that would drive me absolutely crazy. So I would take a camera, put it on a tripod, or unique angle. <laughs> and attach it to a piece of wood and suspend it from a cupboard. Yeah, yeah. When uh, Sherry does a lot of her cooking videos, we have a metal uh, kitchen island that can roll around in the kitchen, and she does a lot of her preparation on it. So the way that I do that is we usually just do it with our iPhones. We put one iPhone on a tripod, which sits on the corner of this island and is looking up at Sherry. The other one, I took a, it's a six, seven foot board and drilled a hole in it and put a camera mount on the end of that board. Stuck it up over top of the cupboards. From my selfie stick. Yeah, yeah, was it was from, it was from a selfie stick. Yeah. It mounted that on the end of the board and hang it out over top of the island. Well, if it stays relatively close to the cupboards, it's okay, but if keep them entertained. Keep them entertained? Yeah. <laughs> but in the case of where I want to get it centered out over the island. Well, I need a counterbalance on the other end of the board to support the weight of the of the camera. So, in my quick thinking, I looked around the kitchen and grabbed a loaf of bread and tied it on the other end of the board. So, 
We have this loaf of bread hanging on a board that's supporting this camera on the other end, looking down over the uh, kitchen island where she's doing her prepping. We go in and we start both cameras at the same time, or roughly the same time. We just start them both. And I tell her action, and then she goes away and starts doing her thing. And then when she's done, she screams, okay, I'm done. And so I have to come back in and I have to reach up and shut the, shut the phone off that's over her head. And uh, she shuts the one off on the, on the island there. Then I have to mix them all together. <coughs> so any of those videos that, that you've seen, like uh, the one where she just did the, uh, the recipe thing for, uh, for the cookbook, where I have a shot in a shot where you see her her talking and then what she's doing with her hands and stuff on the table. That's done with, in our particular case, two iPhones. It could be a VCR, not a VCR, a video cam, or an, or an SLR camera on a video mode. Anyway, it's two different cameras. It could also be webcams. We've also done it with webcams. And then it's all mixed together within the editing program. So once you have these shorter clips, it just makes it easier to work with. You can put different filters in. You can easily see here how that changes the I have come up with an idea, a couple the ideas. appearance. This one is we have new tote bags here. Two family homestead, smudge for those of you that don't know is our logo. He is a real dog. He is my St. Bernard slash Great Pyrenees. So anyway, that's just to give you an idea. I think I hear a puppy. I'm sure I hear a puppy. Oh my. Alright. I think she wants to show her puppy off. Alright. So anyway, this is Smudge. I can't see Smudge. Well, I can see the top of his face. Yeah, I think she's top of his head. Let's go over here, Smudge. Selfie stick and a Dollar Tree mini tripod works wonders. So does a cardboard box, a piece of scrap wood, anything you can find laying around the house okay, okay. to okay. position okay. your camera okay. in such a way that okay. Yuck. it's it's stable. Give myself some more memory here, so you can uh, so so that it's stable. So anyway, that's how you use the quick cutter in Filmora. It's it's a heck of a tool. It won't work for you right the first time you try to use it. You go, oh, I cut it off too soon, or I cut it off too in afterwards. But you've never ever harmed the original file. You can always go back and do it again. And it does it so fast. You can go in. I have let the camcorder run for a couple hours while we've been working out in the garden or something. We're just kind of doing an overview. And obviously a couple hour video is, is very long. Matter of fact, the, the camcorder cuts up the video into... Yes. I think it's about 40 minute, 45 minute segments that just automatically flow together. Autumn, in some cases, that is true. 
Country Girl, good evening. Um, a little bit of plan beforehand is is fine. Move. Let's go On the other side of the the coin, there, you 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 will lose the spontaneity. Spot spontaneity. Yeah. There we go. Spontaneity. This way. Of uh, of just going live with it, so to speak. Still not in the picture. So. He's being greedy. Hmm? I think Sherry wants to show you some others. And I'm pretty well done. If you got some questions, go ahead and, and on, pop them in there. Boy, smudge. And, uh, Turn your tushy around. Come here. I will see here if okay. I can. There we go. 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 I'll bring up. Uh, there is smudge. Oh. And, I'll, and I'll bring me. I'll bring me. So anyway, there's smudge. Country girl's been mean all day, huh? So. I guess that's that's kind of it for me here this evening. If anybody's got any questions, be sure to send me an email. If we, if I can't answer via email, we'll give you a phone call or whatever. Whatever we got to do, we'll, we'll do our best to get you going here. Um... I guess the most important thing to remember is the program was never going to hurt your original file. Just don't overwrite it with something else. Um, I'm struggling so much with the anxiety of being on camera and I'm making myself look more awkward. Any tips for overcoming that? Yes, Autumn. Do this. Whatever you're going to be videoing. Touche, Mark. Touche. What, whatever you're going to be videoing, if it's going to be working in the kitchen, if it's going to be cleaning the house, uh, working out in the yard, just set the camera up and turn it on and forget it's there. Totally forget about it. You will eventually. You'll not pay any attention to it. So it all comes with practice. What are you doing, Smudge? Oh, you should realize when he realized he was going upstairs. A <coughs> hundred and some more pounds dragging me faster than I could ever go up the stairs. Now there was a video for you. So. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So, anybody's got any questions? I don't see any popping up here. Don't forget, if you would like to win the cookbook, go and leave a comment on that video. If you would uh, like to have a tote bag with Smudge's picture on it, send us an email, and the proceeds from that are going to June Gall. Um, if you would like a plaque. Andy's making those Andy, nice little plaques. Andy, the guy that likes to be punished. Likes to be punished. And I he's going to have his hair dyed red next weekend. Okay. But Andy's also doing some stuff for Jim Gall. And kudos to him. Thrive Life. Super Chats. Whatever. Thank you all for being here. Um, I see. I see. We've dropped down a little bit. Some people are going to get some stuff done. And uh, thank you all for being here. 
and we will see you next tomorrow night, yep. 8 o'clock, for the live drawing for the cookbook. Be sure to go check out that video, leave a comment. I want this cookbook, and you could possibly be the winner. Oh, yeah, Andy, you were feared for your life. Uh huh, right. Anything else? You want to say anything? Yeah. Okay, folks. Take care. Bye-bye. And a special thank you to all of our moderators. Jeez. Brown Coat Country Girl, Fun Eye World. Come on. Um, I'm probably missed somebody. Allie, Allie and JD and all of our moderators, thanks so much. We always appreciate all the help you, you give us. So take care, everyone. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.